It's been quite a while since things have gone well for Everglow. From scandals and canceled schedules to lack of comebacks, all the signs are pointing to the group coming to a devastating end. Everglow were popular ever since they made their debut with Bon Bon Chocolat. Considering that Itzy and Idol debuted around the same time and the fact that they came from a small Chinese company, they really reached quite a big success. Arrival of Everglow debuted and peaked at number six on the Gaon album chart and the title track Bon Bon Chocolat debuted and peaked at number five on the Billboard World Digital Song Sales chart. From the start, it was obvious that Everglow would have a lot more popularity overseas than they would in South Korea, but it didn't bother the company. The issue started with the group's first comeback with Adios in August of 2019 and continued in the future. Even though their songs are widely popular and loved, you must remember that the group itself was from a very small company. That's why it was unexplainable to some K-pop fans why the music videos for Adios and Dun Dun were gaining so many views in such a short amount of time when the comments and the likes weren't matching up up to the views. Some talked it up to their popularity in the West, but people were convinced that Yuehua Entertainment was buying music video views in an attempt to make Everglow look a lot more popular than they actually were. Since they were passing groups like Red Velvet, Twice, and EXO in views, these accusations spread like wildfire. The theory continued with Everglow's other comebacks, with people saying that Yuehua Entertainment was even buying views for their teasers and performance videos. However, this never got confirmed, but people were convinced that it was true. This would only only be the beginning of the quote-unquote downfall of Everglow. In February 2021, one of the most popular members of the group, Asha, was accused of school mistreatment, which caused the group's reputation to take a big hit. An online user went on Nate Pan and claimed that she was a former middle school classmate of Asha who was severely mistreated by her. The accuser said that Asha began tormenting her when she started dating a guy that Asha had allegedly dated in the past. She claims that Asha made some inappropriate comments and would harass her every time she passed by her. The accuser accusations got worse as the accuser also said that Asha and her friends started physically attacking her, claiming that they started hitting her and striking the back of her neck. The netizen went on to say that she broke up with her boyfriend due to Asha's alleged harassment, but then, according to her, Asha started spreading malicious rumors about her, which allegedly followed her all the way through high school. The netizen also said that she got to meet Asha later on, but wasn't recognized by her. Knowing just how serious the accusations are in South Korea and the way netizens didn't like Everglow all that much, the accusations went viral in no time. Asha was called all sorts of names and the group's reputation only got worse. Fortunately, the accusations were proven to be false and her name got cleared up, but that's not all. Unarguably, the group's biggest scandal involved member Edon. Well, two of the group's biggest scandals. One of them happened in March of 2021 as Edon posted a picture on her Weibo account to show support for the cotton produced in the Uyghur Autonomous Region in Xinjiang. The picture was of cotton and a version of H&M's logo, which she captioned, hashtag I support Xinjiang cotton. Due to China being accused of violating human rights against the Uyghur minority in Xinjiang, where cotton is grown and harvested, the post was met with tons of controversy. International fans expressed to be disappointed, but not surprised, but Korean netizens were much harsher on her. The comments on online forums included things like, could she still say this if her own family was being forced into labor like this? All Chinese idols must be kicked out of their groups. Please stop hiring Chinese idols. The controversy didn't even have a chance to simmer down before Eden got in trouble again, this time in a much bigger issue. In January of 2022, Everglow held a fan meet in which they decided to greet fans for the new year. And while five of the members bowed down to their fans on their hands and knees to greet their fans in the traditional Korean way, Edon didn't bow but put her hands together instead, greeting fans with a traditional Chinese-style greeting. Korean netizens didn't take the situation lightly, feeling disrespected by Edon's actions. A netizen angrily commented, why does she bother singing in Korean? Why learn Korean at all. Can we please stop taking in these CCP kids and training them? Another netizen made a comment saying, China has a ban on Hallyu culture. Why can't Korean entertainment companies start kicking out all of the Chinese idols? Just keep the girl groups all Korean. The Chinese netizens praised her actions and said that she's a proud idol who protects Chinese tradition, which only made things worse for her, and netizens wanted her and Everglow gone. This is where the group really started to take a downfall. Instead of actually dealing with the situation, Yuehua Entertainment did the worst thing imaginable. They sent Edon to China and put her on hiatus. They never said that it was because of the scandal and actually told the fans that she would be going back home to spend time with her family, but everyone knew the truth. Edon went to China, Everglow promoted as five temporarily, and as time went on, their popularity only went downhill. Their first comeback with Edon went as well as you would have thought. No matter how much of a banger pirate was, the album only sold around 40,000 copies, which are pretty bad numbers for a group that's been around since 2019 and were surprised 
surpassing Twice and Red Velvet in terms of views. With Iron's situation and a disappointing comeback, more fans started to pay attention to how Yuehua Entertainment treats the group, which fans believe to be one of the reasons why Everglow aren't doing as well as they should be. First of all, fans were complaining that the whole group had slowly turned into Mia and friends, with the focus falling into a single member each comeback, while the other ones got sidelined. Like the ridiculous way in which the producer gives a minute of lines to one member, while another barely gets 30 seconds of lines in the entirety of the mini-album. Second, for the group's last comeback, they barely did anything to promote the members, except for the few performances that they did. The fans also had a clear idea of how much the staff members mistreated the members when a male staff member was heard yelling at Asha on a V-Live. The company itself didn't respond to the situation, except for deleting the clip of the incident and the V-Live as a whole, but another member, Shihyun, came out and said that the staff member was screaming because of bugs. That made the situation even more unbelievable, considering that Yuehua had gone out of their way to delete the clip across social media and even the V-Live. They also opened up a pop-up store in which they included all of their groups, except for, you guessed it, Everglow. The most extreme and recent case of the company mismanaging the girls and setting them up for failure is the cancelled Southeast Asia tour. Everglow was supposed to go on tour in Southeast Asia, with the tour starting off in Manila on December 15th, to then continue to Bangkok on December 17th, Kuala Lumpur on December 19th, and Jakarta on December 21st. Southeast Asian fans were excited about the shows and rushed to buy the tickets, but the joy was short-lived. Nearly a week before the tour was supposed to kick off, the concert promoters Magic Sound K-Pop and Make It Live Asia made a statement on December 9th saying that the tour had been cancelled, saying that it was impossible to provide the finest concert to the fans and to the group during this time. The fans were refunded, but the decision itself was confusing, especially since it was coming in such short notice before the scheduled tour even started. After fans put two and two together, the blame fell on Yuehua Entertainment and their poor planning skills. Ever since the announcement of the tour itself, fans had complained that they only had a month to make plans about attending. The tour was also promoted very little, and all the shows were planned to take place on weekdays, which made it harder to attend for fans who were working or studying. Because of this, the shows had very low ticket sales, with only 59 tickets being sold for the Jakarta show. This supposedly made the company cancel the tour altogether. This angered fans, since it showed that Yuehua Entertainment weren't interested in seeing Everglow become successful by reaching their full potential as a group. With multiple scandals under their belts, the company's blatant mistreatment, and the fact that the group hasn't had a comeback in more than 400 days, it's normal for fans to think that the group is going to disband soon. It's even come to a point where casual listeners think that they've disbanded already since they haven't heard a peep from Everglow in so long. From a group that went from having members going to the hospital due to being overworked to them not having a comeback in over a year, the end of the group seems to be closer than we thought. Let's hope that Yuehua Entertainment comes to their senses and realizes that Everglow is worth investing to, even though that they've been proving that ever since their debut. It will be hard for them to get back to their level of popularity with all the groups that are debuting recently, but it would definitely be a step into the right direction. Share your thoughts in the comments and see you next time. Bye guys!